Accurately diagnosing Alzheimer's disease can be a challenge. It's upwards of about 40 to 50 percent of people are either undiagnosed or misdiagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Dr. Randall Bateman is a professor of neurology at Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis. He explains a PET scan or spinal tap are used to diagnose, but the testing may be an expense and burden, possibly difficult for the patient and not easily accessible, so it may never get done. Without testing, doctors can't be sure, as other forms of dementia masquerade as Alzheimer's. And without a diagnosis, treatment options specifically for Alzheimer's patients, including possible advantages of participating in clinical trials, would not be offered. But there is an easier testing option. C2N Diagnostics in St. Louis has an Alzheimer's blood test on the market. A test that detects Alzheimer's disease amyloid plaques that uh, exist in the brains of people with Alzheimer's disease. The reason it's so exciting is that as a blood test, it's a very easy and accessible way for us to find people who have Alzheimer's disease pathology. Dr. Bateman is a scientific co-founder of C2N Diagnostics. The blood test called Precivity AD is a result of Dr. Bateman's research with Dr. David Holtzman at WashU. In a recent international study led by Dr. Bateman involving nearly 500 patients, the blood test for Alzheimer's disease is proven highly accurate. Three independent large national studies in different continents were all collecting blood samples and doing these PET scans, those, those red active PET scans to detect the amyloid plaques, and also collecting cerebrospinal fluid through lumbar puncture. And the question was, how well does the blood test stack up to the more invasive spinal taps or the more expensive PET scans? And when we compared that, um, we found a few things. One is that it compares quite well. So we have accuracies of about 85 to 90, 93%, depending on how we use the test. And uh, also it was highly consistent across these different uh, groups of people in different studies, different collection methods. So it suggests that the test is robust, that you can use this test in a variety of different studies, different settings, and you get the same answer. He says when combined with genetic risk factors, the test is up to 93% accurate at identifying people at risk of Alzheimer's. When you measure the, the proteins in the blood, you can measure uh, amyloid beta, which is one of the proteins these amyloid plaques are made of. The plaques also consist of another protein called APOE, and APOE is a risk factor for Alzheimer's. And when you measure both of those proteins and you compare it to a, a sensitive test like cerebrospinal fluid, then it gets to 93% accuracy. These are tests of the pathology of Alzheimer's disease of amyloid plaques. So at any stage, which uh, occurs years before people get symptomatic, all the way through the time that they have dementia and progressing, uh, this test would be positive it would show that the presence of amyloid plaques are there in the brain. Bateman says study results suggest the blood test can be useful in identifying non-impaired patients who may be at risk for future Alzheimer's disease, offering them the opportunity to get enrolled in clinical trials when early intervention has the potential to do the most good. According to C2N Diagnostics, any doctor who can prescribe medication for Alzheimer's and dementia can order the blood test, including doctors who specialize in memory care and primary doctors. And so that test is commercially available and it's approved through a system called CLIA, which is a, a clinical laboratory approved test to be used in medicine. And so that's one of the approval steps. There are other approval steps uh, that it can be done includes things like uh, insurance companies reimbursing for the test or paying for the test. And that typically happens through Medicare and through other systems. And also FDA review and approval of the test to be used in the disease setting. And so that's underway also. So all of these things are going forward in parallel to try to make the test more available to people.